Hi readers, it's Miss Cigarello and I'm here to talk you through your learning with our theme of a poetry lesson, The Path That Leads to Home. And this is our second day of reading this poem. And that's because poetry, you know, it takes usually one, two or three readings to truly understand the meaning of poems. And that's why we have a saying that says one, two, three, poetry is for me. And that just kind of helps you remember that you should usually have to read poems um, about three times to get the, the meaning. And um, poetry is usually shorter. It's a shorter genre because um, the poets pick their words so carefully. Um, they don't need too many words to get across this really um, special meaning of their poems and, and to convey the feeling in their poems. So they use a lot of figurative language that we have to stop and think about. They have to also, um, they choose their words based on the rhythm and rhyme that they want their poem to have. And so that often affects um, the way that the words are arranged. Now, when we're reading poetry, we also want to think about the stanzas. We want to see how many stanzas are in a poem. And we want to think, after we read a stanza, we should stop and think, what was this stanza all about? Similarly, like we do with paragraphs in um, prose or even in informational text and kind of think, what was happening here? What was this paragraph all about? So yesterday we read for what the poem says and we, you had three exit tickets and one of your exit tickets was asking you to think about what you heard repeated again and again in the first line, the title. So we read the title, the path that leads to home. So what was in the title here? What was in the first line? And then also what was in the last line of the poem. And when you read that, and, um, and even throughout the poem, hopefully you noticed that you had the phrase leads to home. Um, and even using the kind of illustration in the background here of seeing the path, hopefully you're able to see that, you know what, this poem again was about some type of path. You know, we've been reading poems about roads, right? And so this again was about some type of path. And, um, and so when we're thinking, okay, this is about you know, a path that leads to home, we want to think, how does a speaker feel about the path that leads to home? And the speaker, remember, is the one who is um, kind of either talking or conveying the message in the poem. It's different from the poet. The poet is Edgar Guest, but the, the um, speaker is the one who is kind of um, not really a character, but similar to a character. It's the, the person who is um, involved in the poem here. Okay. And so as we were, again, thinking about again and again, we saw it, the path that leads to home throughout our next task was to kind of read through the words and think, okay, what do we hear happening again and again? And, and what do we hear think about each stanza as we read? This, doing this again together today is going to help you at the end of the day of our reading today when you think about the theme of this poem. Okay, so first let's read through and then we will think about the theme of this poem before you answer your exit tickets. Alrighty, so let's read. The little path that leads to home, that is the road for me. And again, that's the speaker who's talking. I know no finer path to Rome with finer sights to see. And I'm thinking they use the word Rome here because it rhymes with home. And Rome means to kind of walk about, walk around on. So I know no finer path to Rome with finer sights to see. And think about finer, like when you think, think of oh, something that's so fine, like um, that's fine. Like fine is like with no finer, it's pretty extreme and absolute language here thinking, okay, so um, there's nothing finer in the world to the speaker than this path that leads to home. With thoroughfares, and when we scroll down to um, to see what thoroughfares was meaning, then we could see that there was a footnote here that said um, that thoroughfares means main roads or highways. So that's a nice way you could just insert a synonym here. Oftentimes when you're not sure what a word means, you can insert a synonym or a word that 
you think would make sense there, that is something like that word, um, similar to that word, and sometimes it'll help you understand. So we're going to use the word highways here instead of thoroughfares, okay? So watch this. With highways, the world is lined that lead to wonders new, but he who treads them leaves behind the tender things and true. Well, that was certainly was some um, figurative language there, but thinking about he who treads them, walks on them, leaves behind the tender things and true. So tender things, I'm thinking tender means like soft, you know, so um, soft and kind of special, tender. So the tender things and true. So here the speaker is saying, okay, that these highways are lining the world and they lead to all these wonderful new places, but who walks, the person who walks on them is leaving behind the soft and special things that are true to life and true to your heart, right? So if you think about, well, what is this stanza one all about? In stanza one here, we can see that the speaker is saying that, okay, yes, there are these highways that lead to many, you know, new places and wonders, but the path to home is no finer. There's no finer path to Rome. So the, the path to home is where this speaker wants to be. Okay, so that's what that first stanza there was all about. So let's continue on and see if we can figure out here, okay, well, now um, how does stanza two add to that? So let's keep reading here. All right, so now we're here in stanza two. Oh, north and south and east and west. Ooh, so thinking of that compass, right, that we've learned about our directions, north and south and sorry, north and south and east and west, the directions, the crowded roadways go. Okay, so thinking, okay, there's all these roadways and they are crowded with people, okay? So picture with the crowded roadways. They're going in all these directions with lots of people on them. Remember, taking them to all these wonders of new is what the first stanza told us, okay? All these roadways leading to wonders. Okay, so let's see. And sweating brow and weary breast are all they seem to know. Well, you know what? Well, I'm not sure here what weary breast means, but if thinking of sweating brow, I know sweating, we know what sweating is, and then brow, I'm thinking of like your eyebrow. And so figure, that's a little bit of figurative language here, thinking sweating brow is kind of like um, standing for like if you're sweating you're, and um, you're really like kind of um, worried. And you know what? Worried is connected to weary over here. Weary also has this negative connotation or negative meaning. So both of these have this kind of negative meaning. Weary breasts, thinking of um, that's like a heavy, worried chest. So, and sweating brow and weary breast are all they seem to know. So all of these people picture them as, you know, um, feeling worried and, and, and not so good, kind of negative here about things in life. And mad for pleasure, some are bent, and some are seeking fame. Well, I love this word bent here. Um, and the reason the author uses this word bent is because it's going to rhyme here with discontent, discontent down here in line 15. Okay, but this is not meaning bent like, um, like you bend something, like you bend an object um, in half or something. It's, it's meaning something different. So let's see. And mad for pleasure, some are bent. Oh, mad. I'm thinking like crazy mad. Okay, so crazy for pleasure. Some are bent. So that means that they're crazy for pleasure. Like they just are going on these roads because they just can't wait to go have fun. They are in the bent there means that they are just, um, they are not going to give up. They are determined on going to have pleasure and find some pleasure and have fun on these roads. Okay. And some are seeking fame. So to be famous. Okay. So some of these people on these crowded roads want to go have fun and some want to be famous. Let's see what else they think. And some are sick with discontent. I know when you're content, content means happy. So discontent means not happy. So some are sick with discontent. So some of these guys are just on these crowded roads are just like so un unhappy that they are, are like feeling kind of sick. You know, they're just not doing well. And some are bruised and lame. Oh my goodness, the more strong language here. So hurt, bruised, hurt, right? And lame. 
um, also means hurt. So some of these guys are just like physically not doing well. Okay, so this whole stanza, I hope that you can see now this whole stanza, stanza two, the speaker is talking about here how these other, these roadways go to many places, but the people who are traveling on them, the speaker feels here that they um, are not happy or kind of on these roads for the right reasons. Okay, so that's kind of what this stanza two there was all about. Okay, so now let's go ahead and read on to stanza three and see how stanza three adds on to this understanding. Let's see here. Okay, so we come on down here to stanza three. Remember, stanza is a group of lines that are put together and separated from the other lines. Okay, so here we go. Stanza three. Across the world, the gleaming steel holds out its lure for men. You know what? Gleaming steel. Let me think about what the author, why the, the poet used gleaming steel here. I know they were talking about highways. Remember, they were the poet... Um, have put thoroughfares meaning highways um, and and so I'm thinking that this gleaming steel here is talking about these these highways that are made of steel right that are going in all these different directions okay so the across the world the gleaming steel holds out its lure for men by luring something in I'm trying to get it to come to me I'm like I'm like you if you're trying to trap an animal you might be luring the animal into your trap Okay, so um, the, he's, the um, speaker here is saying, okay, so these highways, they, they lure people to them, probably to try to go see these wonders. But let's see how he feels. But no one finds his comfort real till he comes home again. Oh, comfort real, that's so strong. Thinking, okay, again, all oh, that might be fun out here, but when you are home and that, this again and again, what we're hearing, this path to home is where you find your comfort. And charted lanes now line the sea for weary hearts to roam. Oh, here's weary again and roam again. So traveling on these roads, right? So charted lanes now line the sea. So even over by the ocean, right, by the sea, there's these highways still. And it says, but again, speakers using some negative connotation here, saying that these people are weary who are even over here by the sea. So again, that's kind of having this negative feeling about these roads to other places. But oh, the finest path to me is that which leads to home. So there we have it again and again, right? In that AA, the finest path is that which leads to home. Okay, so again, now here we have in stanza three, we have these thoughts of the, um, that the speaker is kind of conveying these feelings about these other roads again, saying, okay, yep, that you know what, there are these other roads and these other highways and paths that lead to other places, but again, the finest path to me is that which leads to home. So, wow, I'm really getting this feeling that this speaker in this poem um, would prefer to be home rather than out traveling on these other places. Maybe we can infer that, well, maybe the speaker has to travel sometimes for work or something, but really prefers to be home. Okay, let's see. So now let's move on to stanza four. We'll think, okay, so how does stanza four add on to all of this thinking here about these paths to other places and then the paths to home? So we kind of have two opposite ideas happening here in this in this poem. Let's see. All right, let's come on down here. Tis there I come to laughing eyes and find a welcome true. Talking about coming home. Tis there I come to laughing eyes and find a welcome true. So you have to kind of, I'm inferring here that you know what? He's coming home and at home you usually have family at home. And maybe these laughing eyes are, um, the laughing eyes of his family, like his family that is happy to see him and giving him a true welcome when he gets home. Maybe let's continue reading and see. Tis there all care behind me lies and joy is ever new. Okay, so again, that's some um, language that kind of almost seems like old fashioned, right? The way that it's worded, but we kind of think, okay, well, it's the general meaning. Well, it says, tis there all care behind me lies. So my cares lie behind me. I have no cares and joy is ever new. 
So again, this is kind of like this feeling of um, happiness, right? Good feelings here about being home. And oh, when every day is done upon that little street, a pair of rosy youngsters run to me with flying feet. Ooh, so I'm kind of confirming what we were inferring up here about his family. So thinking that, okay, then when the speaker gets home on his street to home, then when he gets there, he's got these laughing eyes. So we can kind of think this is probably his children, right? That are coming out to meet him with flying feet. So of course, feet aren't really flying, but that's a nice alliteration there. And um, we can infer that that means that they are running really fast to go and meet him as he gets home. Okay, so here we go. So stanza four is this kind of very um, happy feeling here, right? About being home. And, and it's introducing kind of the reason, one of the reasons why um, he's happy. Um, is because of these youngsters and these laughing eyes. So it's family being at home. Okay. So again, kind of confirming that he's thinking of how much he'd rather be at home with his family than traveling all these other places in the world for wonders of the world. All right. And let's see. Our last stanza here. The world with myriad paths is lined, but one alone for me. I'm not sure what myriad here means, but I remember um, in earlier stanzas that the poet was talking about um, all these many paths, right? That that line um, the world in all directions. Um, so I'm thinking myriad probably means many, like many paths, right? And uh, and I have a little bit of an antonym here to help me, an opposite. The world with myriad paths is lined, but one alone for me. So um, one is the opposite of many, right? So we can use that opposite, that antonym there to help us understand what myriad means. So many, the world is lined with many paths, but one alone for me. There's that again and again. One little road where I may find the charms I want to see. So charms, thinking of um, not like a charm that you would hang on your necklace, right? But maybe having that that positive feeling again, the, the good things, the special things I want to see. The thoroughfare's majestic call. Oh, you know what? I remember that we could insert the synonym of highway so for thoroughfare. So let's do that. The highway's majestic call, the multitude to roam. I would not leave to know them all. The path that leads to home. Oh, and there's that path that leads to home again, right? In the end, the poet left us off with that repetitive line. Okay, and again, kind of giving an opposite feeling here between um, these lines. So between 37 and 38, these two lines are kind of saying, okay, so even though these highways might call you majestically or wonderfully um, for many, multitude, many to roam, I would not leave to know them all, the path that leads to home. So again, he's just confirming that, you know what, I wouldn't listen to that call. I would prefer to just stay at home with my family. Okay, so you can see that's ending stanza is again, just the, the speaker reminding us that, you know what, um, the speaker prefers to be at home and home with your with his family, right? Okay. So as you can see, readers, um, reading through each stanza and stopping to think what the stanza was about is a helpful strategy for thinking about poetry. And your task today is to take the meaning of, of um, the, the words here as they were presented in these lines and stanzas. Um, now that you kind of understand, hopefully, that you know this, this poem was about um, many paths that my many roads might lead to many places in life, um, but the speaker feels like, you know, home is the place to be. So those opposite ideas. So take that thinking and you now are gonna turn that into a life lesson. So yes, the poet wrote this poem for us to enjoy the words and to kind of just ponder the words and enjoy them and um, think about how beautiful they sound. But also the, uh, the poet wanted us to take a lesson to our life, 
Um, so just like a theme of a story, we take these ideas that were written here and think, okay, if I had to teach somebody a lesson for life, something to take to their heart, that's a general lesson for life that anybody could follow, kind of telling them something um, to do about their life or not to do in their life. Um, then what could be a big life lesson here that we could take away from this? Okay, so I want you to hold those thoughts in your mind as you get ready to um, do your exit tickets and think about the, the theme, the best theme option that is there. And remember, when you're thinking about that, read through each answer choice and eliminate the ones that don't make sense and then find your trickies and then go back and rethink it to find your perfect. Remember, it can't be about just a little part of the poem. It should be encompassing all of the ideas of the poem. Okay, so then you can um, go ahead and answer your exit tickets. And remember when it asks you for part B to find the lines that support your answer, make sure you use that elevator strategy. So after you determine part A, then um, continue to keep one finger or one thought up near part A and go down and read your first one in part B, see if that aligns. Then go back up to A to remember where you live on, on your answer in A. And then go down to part B and read the next choice and think, does this support it? Okay, and do the same thing until you have figured out you're perfect for part B. You've got this and we are proud of you. Do your exit tickets and have a great rest of the day.